This past weekend, I hosted my first event. Over a hundred people came here to Bath for Simon PsychomCon, and it was completely overwhelming. <laughs> The event went really, really well. I don't actually think we could have asked for it to have gone any better. I had some amazing feedback from people on the day. People at the end came up to me and said how much they enjoyed it and how much they, uh, they took away from the talks and the panels that we had and how most of all they just enjoyed meeting other people of this community and, and making new friends. So we hit our objectives. I think it's fair to say that if you couldn't make it to this event, I'll probably do another event like this, probably in the UK at some point in the future, though not for a few months at least, please. <laughs> and if that next event goes well, maybe we could look at doing something outside of the UK. Maybe actually making the event a bit more ambitious and making it not just about my YouTube channel. For me, the day was a complete blur. If you've been married, you might know this feeling of you spend months working up to your wedding day, doing all this preparation, and then on the day, you're kind of on rails, like you know this thing's happening, this thing, this thing, this thing, and things happen to you. It almost feels like you don't really have all that much agency. But then you have these conversations with, with you know, like a hundred people, and you get to talk to everyone in some detail. It's only afterwards that I think it really hits you, like you kind of process it all at once, which is what I did. I sat down afterwards and I was just like, <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody who came. Some of you travelled internationally to this event and it was just so wonderful to meet you. As I said on the day, this wasn't an event about me, it was an event about you, this, this community of people. So I can't thank you enough for being there. Particular thanks must also go to the organising committee, people from the community who volunteered their time to make this event possible. Kat, Danvi, Cap, Alan, it simply wouldn't have been possible without your work. Thank you so much. Thanks also to the RP Geeks for providing an incredibly chaotic one hour one shot, which was, uh... Yeah, about what I expected. <laughs> and also thank you to some of the moderators from the Discord who volunteered, came to Bath just to shepherd people around and make sure the event ran smoothly. Thank you so much. By the way, we have a Discord, in case you didn't know, there's a, there's a link down there in the description. This past weekend felt like a milestone, like a kind of a culmination of my work to date. And actually, it just so happens that the event, purely by chance, coincided almost exactly with this YouTube channel reaching half a million subscribers, which... <laughs> How do you even begin to process that? All of this is only possible. I've only had the amazing opportunities I've had and I've only been able to do this job because of you, the people who watch my videos and the community that's built up around them. And the two words that I said most frequently over the weekend were, thank you. And I'm gonna repeat them to you now. Thank you so much for giving me this extraordinary job and the opportunities that I've had. Trust that I am always aware of how lucky I am to do this. I just said that this all felt like kind of a milestone in my life, but it also feels like a, a critical point, like a turning point in my life, because behind the scenes, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's some new projects and new opportunities and a lot of new videos that I'm working on, almost all of which I can't talk about yet. Though one project I can tell you about is that this week I launched a podcast, How to Make a Science Video, in which myself and Sophie Ward, who you may know from Soph's Notes, talk to science creators on YouTube about how they do their jobs. So how they choose their topics, how they write their scripts, how they design thumbnails and titles, all that kind of thing. The first two episodes, talking to Tirzu and Simone Yetch, are available right now, wherever you cast your pods. And all the episodes of the first season, that's 10 episodes, are available on Nebula right now. So if you have a Nebula subscription, then you can listen to all the episodes. Otherwise, all 10 episodes with guests like uh, Tibbies and Brian from Real Engineering and Angela Collier will be coming out one a week. But like I say, there's so much going on behind the scenes that I still can't talk about. and. It feels like my work and frankly my life 
are entering a new phase. The main reason I wanted to make this video was because of this turning point, because of all this stuff that's going on in the background. I wanted to give myself a chance to make a thesis statement, to try and explain, I guess, in just a couple of words, what I am trying to accomplish, which is something that I wrote in the keynote for the event. And I feel like it's useful for me and hopefully for you to say this online as well. In all my work, I am trying to enact positive change on the most important issue in the world, on the climate crisis. And I think the best use of my talents, such as they are, is making climate science more accessible to people, with the intention that that will help people make more informed decisions in their lives and, crucially, in how they vote. Up until now, I focused on improving people's understanding of the physical climate system and how scientists talk about it, because that's my wheelhouse, that's exactly my academic background. I'm still going to make videos about that going forward, but I think I want to focus a bit more now on how climate and climate science intersect with our lives. So trying to focus a bit more on the tangible. That's not to say that I'm only going to make projects about climate going forwards. I think there's a big advantage to being a scientist or a science communicator and not just focusing on one thing. But to summarise the ethos, I guess, of what I'm trying to accomplish in just a few words, I'm trying to improve people's climate literacy and help them make informed decisions. So while things may change a little bit going forwards, and perhaps you'll notice some changes in the stuff that I do, that's the idea. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm really looking forward to making these projects, and as I said before, I'm just so grateful that I have the opportunity to do this. And I only have this opportunity because of you lovely people. And actually, in some cases, that's very literal. If you support me on my Patreon, then you are quite literally financing these new projects. If you didn't know, I have a Patreon where you get access to videos early, you have some say in video topics that I choose, and you get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, a monthly vlog that Luke does an absolutely killer job on. So if you miss my vlogs, then they're on my Patreon. The names that were scrolling past for this whole time, by the way, were my executive producer patrons who support me at the top tier. Thank you so, so much. That's all I had for you today. I just wanted to reflect on the craziness of the past weekend and take a moment, pause, reflect before moving on to this new phase. Thank you again for coming to the event. Thank you as always for your support of my work. And if you want to support this video, you know what to do. You can like and comment and share it, all that kind of thing. And that just leaves me to say thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.